Today, we're gonna to look at how you repair a slash in your tire. Now, depending if you run inner tubes or tubeless, you do have some trail side options. So if you're running an inner tube in your tire, you can put a tire boot in there, which will temporarily enable you to reinflate your tire and get back home. Likewise, with tubeless setups, you can put one of those tire plugs into your tire, which effectively seals up the hole. But it's not a long-term solution because the air will naturally start pushing that slug back out again. So, this is how you can permanently fix a tire and still keep using it tubeless. Okay, so to repair your tire, you're gonna need a few things here. And you've gotta firstly have a lot of patience because it's quite a tricky, fiddly little job. But I can assure you it is worthwhile doing this, especially if you've got a fairly new tire or your tire has a lot of mileage left in it because they're not cheap, so it's definitely worth keeping them going. If nothing else, keep it going as a spare. You can keep it in the back of your car, your van, whatever, for that day when you do need a tire because you've damaged one so badly. Now first up, you're gonna need a decent needle and thread. Now to get through a tire, you're gonna need quite a substantial needle, but it can't be so big that you create big holes in the tire. So what you want is a sort of leather needle, and they've got quite a sort of spearheaded tip on them to actually penetrate through and pull through a decent set of thread. Now as far as thread goes, there's a few schools of thought on this, so you can use different sort of stuff. So the traditional stuff you'd use with leather is a waxed thread. And the reason for that is so you can get through the leather itself. Now, that's obviously a great idea to use with a tire. You could also use fishing line because it's very strong. It's not going to rot over time. But I've been recommended to use linen thread because the tensile strength of this stuff is really, really strong. And it's easier to get into a needle in the first place. The point of this is as long as you've got strong thread and you've got decent needles get through your tire, you're sorted. And obviously to go along with that thread, you're gonna need a decent pair of scissors. Get the sharpest ones possible because otherwise when you cut the thread to put it through the needle, it's gonna fray constantly and you'll get, if you're anything like me, really angry doing this. Next up, you're gonna to need to prepare the tire itself to do this job. Now on the inside of the tire, if you've been using your tire tubeless setup, you're gonna have all the sort of, the sort of rubberized gunk that's left on the tire, so you're gonna to need to remove that first. So you want some sort of solvent cleaner, but you definitely do not want a cleaner that's got any sort of lubricant in it because that will make the surface of that tire shiny and the patch will never stick to it. So something that evaporates like a brake cleaner or some contact cleaner, any sort of isopropyl alcohol would work. Just make sure that it is something with zero sort of lubricant in there. And you're also gonna need a block and some emery paper. Now what you wanna do is just finely roughen the area around the cut just so the vulcanizing solution has the best chance of getting a good grip. Now if you're out on the trail, you can patch up a tire using these plugs. And I'm gonna to demonstrate to you why this is really good but also why it won't last in the long term. This is a sort of a solution so you could finish a race or finish a holiday for example on that tire but it will not last in the long term. But they are however very good to have. So you're gonna need some sort of decent patch to patch up the cut from the inside of the tire. So not only does this help stop the cut growing, but it also ensures that later you're gonna be able to set this same tire up tubeless again. Now look for stuff in the sort of motor industry, stuff suitable for ATVs or motorcycle tires and tubes to repair those. That is the sort of stuff you want. This is made by Schrader, it's heavy duty rubber, and it makes really well with the industrial strength vulcanizing solution. You can also get purpose made, Again, for motorcycles and other things, giant patches which are suitable for both the tire carcass and an inner tube. In this case, a tire carcass, so this is the perfect tool for the job. Just to make the job a little bit easier, I recommend some parchment or greaseproof baking paper and a couple of these little clamps or a big one if you've got one. Now the reason for that is just to hold the patch in place while it's setting. You really wanna give it the longest time to set you possibly can. So you don't wanna ride this the same day. This is like a long-term fix basically and if you put a bit of parchment over the patch when you clamp it the clamps aren't going to stick to the rubber the parchment itself is very easy to remove if it does stick to the tire itself and finally the last thing you're going to need is something to finish the job on the outside so the idea is to stitch up the hole and then you want to patch it on the inside but because the stitches are still exposed on the outside I want to give it some protection to make sure it stays fixed now if any of you have ever been into skateboarding you'll be familiar with the stuff it's called shoe goo and this is the sort of stuff you would smear on the leading edge of your ollie foot, so your favorite foot forwards, to protect your shoe against scuffing against the board when you're doing ollies and kick flips and stuff like that. This can also be used to repair the soles of shoes when they go a bit crocodile shoes. So like five tens sometimes need a bit of help with that department. This stuff is fantastic for it. And because it puts a very rubbery coat on the top afterwards and is very flexible, this is ideal for protecting the tire afterwards on the outside.
Now, depending on where exactly you get the hole in your tire, does affect if you can long-term fix it or not. If it's really close to the bead, then basically forget it because it will tear. You're never gonna be able to reinforce this properly. You could arguably just put loads of stitching around this to hold it in place, but you won't really be able to seal this up in a tubeless way. Now, if it's on the main part of the tread, you are gonna be able to seal this up, but it's gonna be very hard to stitch on this part of the tire, so you do need to consider that. Now, finally, the sidewall, which is pretty much the sort of place you get a tear in a tire that writes off a tire. That is where this technique comes in really, really handy. So I just wanna to demonstrate to you how these sort of tire plugs or slugs work if you're gonna use these out on the trail. I'll just demonstrate to you why they're not gonna stay in there long term and why stitching the tire is actually a better solution. So if you encounter one of these when you're at the side of the trail, the first thing you wanna do is get sort of the reaming tool. You just clear the hole out a bit and make sure it's a good enough size to actually get the plug into place. When you're doing this with a tire on the wheel like you would at the side of the trail, it gives it a bit more support, so it's actually easier to do it. But there you go, so I've got the plug into place and then you need to pull the tool back out again. It's quite tricky to do it, and there you go, and the plug stays into the tire there. Now, these sort of kits do come with a little knife so you can just trim off the excess. Obviously, be very careful doing that. You don't wanna cut yourself. I recommend not cutting it too close to the actual tire for obvious reasons, you don't wanna make it any worse. And there you go, that's gonna stay in place and hold pressure so you can finish your ride or finish the race, but it's not a permanent solution. You can add to this by afterwards putting some vulcanizing solution around it on both sides, but just the nature of the air pressure inside the tire, this will so start to push this out over time, just like this I'm doing from the inside, and you'll find it actually does come out. So this is why you need to repair it properly. And this is what we're gonna get into now. Okay, so we've got a hole that we're gonna fix here. Again, I emphasize the point, if it's on the center of the tread, you can still do this, but it's gonna be incredibly hard to get the stitching accurate because of the nobbles and other stuff going on. This is really focused on the sidewall of the tire. You can still patch a tire up from the inside and you can glue the hole from the outside and it will definitely get you a few more miles out of the tire but this, the sidewall method is the one that kind of writes off a tire, so we're gonna focus on. Flip your tire inside out first, then you wanna clean the surfaces of it. Now this particular tire hasn't been set up tubeless, so I don't need to worry about too much about cleaning the gunk off there, but it's still like, it's not the best surface to be working on. So I wanna make sure that this is being cleaned up with something that's gonna evaporate and not affect the adhesion of the glue on there. So that's gonna be just enough to make sure it takes on there. Next step, you want some sort of medium grade emery paper and you wanna roughen around the patch. Now you're doing this so the vulcanizing glue has the best chance of taking and the patch gets a good contact on there. Now don't go too crazy because if you start exposing the threads of the tire, the tire will deteriorate rapidly. So just enough literally just to roughen the surface there. Now the next step is to flip it back the other way and it's time to get sewing. Okay, so first up, you might wonder why I'm going to the hassle of stitching the slash up on a tire when you could just patch it from the inside and just get on with it. But the thing is, just because the nature of the way the tires are made, the slash will grow. So what you're doing, it doesn't have to be a super neat job. I mean, if it was, to be fair, I'd get someone that's good at stitching to do it, not myself. But you just need to basically cover up that slash on there just enough so it won't grow anymore. If you're doing this with fishing wire or anything else, you're gonna still have the same problems because the tire carcass itself is quite tough. But I promise you it's worth persevering with this. Now you can really go to town on this. I'm doing three basic stitches and then I'm gonna do a cross to go over them to make sure they can't go anywhere. Now I'm gonna tie it off after that. And hopefully that will be my stitching part of this process done. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna cover the stitches externally in another step later on, just so make sure that they don't come undone and the stitches themselves won't rot. Right, let's just tie a knot in this. And I'm happy that that is gonna hold, despite it not looking like the best work. If there's any surgeons out there, you'd probably be absolutely disgusted with this, but it's a tire, so I don't really care. Knot in that. Great, so that is the tire stitched from the outside. Purpose of that is to stop that slash growing anymore. 
So obviously it's no longer tubeless compatible, but we're gonna remedy that from the inside out now. So now I've successfully stitched the slash in the tire up. So now the job to do is to patch it from the inside. So this seals it completely. So you wanna do this, whether it's set up tubeless or you're just planning on running inner tubes because it obviously makes sure the tire is waterproof as well. Of course, in this case, I wanna set up tubeless again. So I'm gonna do the best effort to make a really, really good job on this. Now I've already roughened up the inside here. So next job is to put some of this industrial vulcanizing solution on there. Now when cutting this stuff, I think the best technique is to not leave any square edges to make rounded edges because they're less likely to lift. Now this is a fiddly thing to do because of the size of your, and the shape of your tire. But you need to try and get it in a position where it's not gonna move around too much and your patch can take on there. Hoping that this is gonna be tacky enough now and the patch is going to take on there. Now it does take a while, you need to Make sure your patch stays put. Now what I like to do is just put a little bit of baking parchment just on around the edges here, put a couple of clamps on it just to hold it in place. And then I wanna leave it for as long as possible to make sure it's completely taken. So as you can see, it's already just sticking nicely into place here. And then later I'll go around the edges as well, make sure they're firmly stuck down. Now as you can see, it is a waiting game. This is where you have to be patient, otherwise it simply will not take. Remember that the inside of your tire is very different to inner tubes and of course the insides of tires are very different as well so it's really important that you give it enough time to take. This is pretty good but it's still very tacky so it needs probably another hour or so just to really take to the tire. Now what you can do is put a little bit more vulcanizing solution around the outside of the patch and you'll know it's going to stay in place. At this stage you want to make sure you don't flip the tire inside out to do the outside repair you need to wait until this is fully set because otherwise as soon as you turn it inside out there's a chance you're going to wrinkle it up around the edges and it'll start unpeeling. So the tyre is patched successfully on the inside here now. It's still a tiny bit tacky around the outside but the patch is absolutely rock solid around the edges and it's stuck quite well here over the stitching itself so I'm happy with that. So the next stage is to put some glue on the outside of the tyre now. Now this is where I like to use shoe glue because of the nature of how this was designed for skateboarding and to patch up shoes for the sort of abrasion and that. It's a similar sort of concept and it's very flexible. So once this is set, it will provide a nice barrier on the outside of the tire as well. Now when reinstalling to your bike, take into account whether it's tubeless or not. If you're running with an inner tube, if this is still tacky, then you wanna put some talcum powder or some chalk on the inside here just to stop your inner tube sticking to it because if that happens, just with movement on the bike, the tube can tear and obviously the tube can remove that patch. You want a patch to be a permanent fix and stay on there, so just take that into account. So the final part of this repair, and this isn't an essential part, it's just to cover up the outside. Now I like to do this because tires are subject to abrasion when you're riding. If you snag those threads, they can come undone and just affect the job that you've done. But also, you want to make sure it's waterproof and fully sealed and this stuff is just going to help add an extra dimension to that. So I'm just going to pierce that, put the lid on there, snip some of that off and get some on. Now this stuff, I can't emphasize how sticky this is. So you just want to get a small, a small little layer on there and they provide a spatula just so you can just get it into the place that you want. Now you can go to town on this because it is flexible, so it's gonna be fine if there's too much in place. But the, the idea is it just protects the job that you've done and makes a barrier on the outside of the tire there. There you go. Now you've got to bear in mind that's pretty toxic stuff, so try and use this in a well-ventilated area. Not the nicest stuff to work with. Now, quite simply, I have to leave that to dry now. So I'll leave that for a couple of hours. And then this is good to put back on my bike and re-inflate. So there you have it. That is how you repair a sidewall slash or a slash in the carcass of the tire. Okay, so I have successfully stitched up and repaired a tubeless tire here. And this is ready, once it's dry, to go back on my bike. And that tire will be fine for a few more months get some good use out of it, saves a bit of money, better for the environment, all of that sort of stuff. 
Now, of course, you might not be so lucky. It might be straight across the main center of the tire and you can stitch this, but there's more likelihood that it's gonna come open again at a later date. Now, it's up to you if you think you can actually do this job on your tire, but this is how you do it. And hopefully it's gonna be a useful video for you to replicate this at home at some point. Now, for a couple more useful videos, if you wanna find out how to jump in 30 minutes, click right down here. It's a really good video for Neil that teaches you everything you need to know to get airborne in just 30 minutes. Now, if you want to find out my ultimate mountain bike spares, these are all the cool spare parts, like these sort of bits and pieces that you want to be keeping inside your regular toolkit, click right down here. And of course, as always, click on the globe to subscribe. And if you like this video and you found it helpful, give us a thumbs up.